Welcome back to the 39th Annual Sun and Fun here in beautiful downtown Lakeland Linder Regional Airport. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your hosts at the Florida Aviation Network, and it is the official Sun and Fun television network here on the premises today. And uh, I tell you, if you're not here at Sun and Fun watching this on one of the remote sites, if you're sitting in the comfort of your living room, you need to come to the comfort of the ramp and look at what all is going on. There's beautiful aircraft here from all different parts of the world, literally, and we have some of the most interesting people in the world, literally, here. Uh, for example, yesterday we had uh, Tim from Down Under, and he had just flown a sling from uh, California all the way to Lakeland Airport, and that was uh, done, uh, it was a 20-hour trip, and uh, had a wonderful time, 15 years old. So that's the type of impact that we want to have here at Sun and Fun, and Speaking of impact, we have the pleasure today of having some guests on our set from this Disabled American Veteran Group here in uh, at, at Lakeland this year at Sunday Fun, Mr. Larry Kelly and Lynn May. And I want to, I just get so excited when I get these guys here because the aircraft that they fly around and is, is just one of the most remarkable uh, feats that you will ever see. Larry, I'm going to start with you, and then we're going to go over to Lynn because she actually makes things happen. She runs the, the, well, the she's operation. She's our advance. She makes sure everything's set when we get there. And mm -hmm. all you do is drive the bus, the big, the big aluminum bus. Well, and if you see all the grease under the fingernails, turn the wrenches too. <laughs> you are a B-25 pilot. <laughs> yes, but, sir. But, uh, Larry, tell us a little bit about your background, uh, what got you kind of involved in aviation and brought you up to this, to this point. Well, growing up down south, down in South Alabama, my uncle had a little tailor craft. I mean, just basic grassroots aviation, a little two-part, a little two-seat tailor craft. And I helped him with that restoration and started flying that little T-cart all around South Alabama back in the back in the late '50s. Is that where you learned your proper pronunciation of words <laughs> in South Alabama? Careful now. <laughs> <laughs> I had some drinking stump water as a kid, yeah. That, 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 that. But uh, uh, you know, I had some exposure to aviation then. But after I graduated college, and uh, uh, actually, it went to came down here to Sun and Fun back in the uh, early seven, well, mid seventies, I guess, one of the first ones early on, and then went to Oshkosh, and I was absolutely bit. I had to get this taken care. of. I went home. And uh, eight weeks later, I had my private pilot's license. And then, you know, foolishly, uh, I went and bought a Seneca. And, well, now I had to get a multi engine. And the insurance company says, oh, well, you got to have an instrument rating. So now I got an instrument rating. And then, but Warbirds had always been really my, my passion. And uh, first bought an old UC-78 Bobcat, you know, the and old bamboo bomber. You still have that airplane. I still have it, yeah. And we restored that airplane. One, uh, first time I ever entered in judging an airplane was right here at Sun and Fun, 1990, with that airplane. And one Warbird Best Transport here at uh, Sun and Fun, then again at Oshkosh. And, but, you know, the B-25, it always been sort of this iconic, the, the ultimate airplane to me. Uh, you know, some people say, well, to them, it's the, the Model T Ford is their ultimate uh, car. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, it always been the B-25. And after I sold my businesses in 97, I suddenly found myself in a situation where I could afford one. And uh, I called Tom Riley, who you know very well. And I said, Tom, I want to buy a B-25. What's for sale? Well, a week later, I owned Panchito. And the, the, the true story, though, is we walked up to that airplane. I said, Tom, how do you get in it? <laughs> I didn't even know how to get in one, but I suddenly owned one. Uh, and uh, we flew around for a few years with the airplane doing air shows and other things. But And we, we were doing a lot of veterans recognition. We did living history with the airplane and trying to tell the story of the air crew that kept taking these. You know, they're all volunteers that went into the air in World War II. And then 10 years ago... Uh, teamed up with some friends that own a company called Air Support who had been contracted by the Disabled American Veterans to put together an aviation outreach program. 
the uh, the disabled American veteran has been around since 1920, the oldest and the largest of all the veteran service organizations. Now, now and, you're, you're moving a little bit too quick. You're giving us a lot of information in a very short period of time. Let me roll back, and you just mentioned a, a very significant date, Larry. I don't mean to, to, to trip up your flow, but 1920 is when the DAV was... Was founded, yeah, 1920, 93 years ago. And I have to put in a pitch for Ford Motor Company because Ford Motor Company has been a major sponsor and supporter of the disabled American veterans since its founding in 1920. That's remarkable. It really is remarkable when you talk about the mm -hmm. the length of the time that, that this organization mm -hmm. has been in, in process and how probably so few people know about it. Well, they do, and that's our job. Uh, we're not here to take donations or anything like that. That's, that's, that's what we do is take the message. Uh, and, you know, as we were talking with a, a local uh, reporter here this morning, there's over 1.2 million veterans. Estimate, that's a conservative estimate of uh, disabled veterans that's in our communities, walking the streets right out here in Lakeland, mm -hmm. uh, that have service-related disabilities but have not received any kind of benefits for it. You know, the 65-year-old the veteran of Vietnam who's now developed diabetes because of Agent Orange exposure in 1968. Mm -hmm. Now they went to try to get in, uh, try to get some benefits, try to get services for this, assistance that they've earned with their military service. Well, what our job then is is to go around the country to the air show audience, to the air shows. You know, the number one spectator attendance in the country is air shows, not NASCAR, not Major League Baseball, but air shows. And uh, take the message to these veterans all over the country through media outlets, through you know, wonderful groups like we're doing here right now, and uh, take that message so that people understand the veteran who needs the benefits has got to know where to go to get those services. Mm -hmm. And all the National Services Officers with the DAV first have to warn the boots. They are disabled veterans before they can even apply for the job of working for the DAV to be able to assist the veterans. One year of program training before they ever take their first case. Mm. But once they take their case, then they act just like a lawyer does for you. If you're going to court, you don't go in there by yourself, especially not you. No, I, I, <laughs> I need a whole team of lawyers yeah. with me. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, Ben, I've known you for a long time. But you go and get the best lawyer you can find that has the most expertise in, the, in what you need to do. And then, to, so what the veteran does, it comes to the DAV, because these guys and gals, they have worn the boots, they've trained, they know how to make sure you get your benefits. Big difference though, and I'm not knocking lawyers. Now I'm a pharmacist, not a lawyer, but <laughs> <laughs> there's never a charge to the veteran. Their service benefits are always free from the DAV. It's the generosity of the American public, it's the generosity of, of the American industry that supports the DAV through contributions that allow the DAV to provide these services. And services may be, we got fleets of hundreds of, of vans around the country that are stationed at VA hospitals all over. So if you're a disabled veteran and you can't drive to get to your appointments at a VA clinic, a DAV van with a volunteer driver will come pick you up, take you, and take you back home. Again, free, never a charge. Now, you just mentioned the term support. What is this lady over here doing for, uh, <laughs> for as far well, as support goes? You know, there's an awful lot of preparation before you get to an air show. Uh, background setup. You know, the simple stuff like setting up hotels and rental cars and making sure all that stuff is in place, fuel. But also setting up and working with the media in advance, working with the local DAV chapters. You know, there's DAV chapters all across the United States. Uh, I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, we got, I mean, three or four chapters right here in the local area. Yeah, uh, We've got some four. volunteers out of the trailer today. There's four chapters here locally, right? Uh, uh, we have volunteers out of the trailer right now today from local chapters. So she works with the local chapters, helping set up and doing all the advanced work. So when we arrive, we're able to just do what we need to do. Part of it is doing this. Part of it is standing around the airplane, signing autographs. We had a group from your academy this morning, a mm -hmm. whole group of kids out there, and I'm telling them the story of the Doolittle Raid. Because mm -hmm. you know, next week we're going to be at the Doolittle Raiders' 71st and final reunion at Fort Walden Beach. How many are left of those guys? Four. Wow. Four alive. Oh, we lost Tom Griffin back in February. So there's, And Bobby Height, his health does not allow him to travel anymore. So there's only three that can still travel. And sometime later this year, at a date to be announced, the Raiders privately 
We'll open that bottle of 1896 Hennessy Cognac, the year Doolittle was born, mm -hmm. uh, with their goblets, and they'll drink their final toast. You're uh, you might make me choke up here. Let's 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 hear something from Lynn before I get uh, weepy eyed when you uh, bring <laughs> well, up something like that because that that really hits in the heart when you talk. These guys that have dedicated their life. Well, when when they launched off the aircraft carrier that morning, they were all volunteers and they all knew fair. They all knew that they did not have enough fuel to reach China. They were getting there in the middle of the night. The weather was going to be working against them. They were going to be having headwinds. They knew taking off that they had very little chance of surviving that mission. They would most likely wind up either in the South China Sea or being shot down over Japan. They expected to lose half the airplanes. But every man volunteered, and the reserve crews were trying to buy their way on, trying to bribe their ways on, but yet they still went mission before self. And that is the story of the American veteran. And that's the story that the American public has got to never forget. It's the mission before self. Right now, today, I know you just spent some time in Iraq. Uh, in Afghanistan, those young people over there, people say, well, the young people today are not like they were. I disagree. The young people today that's in the American military have the same commitment that the veterans did in 1920 in World War One. that they did in World War II. They had in Korea and Vietnam of my generation and today over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Larry, it gives new meaning in, uh, when you're in, the, in harm's way of, of the true term of a mm -hmm. serious situation. It's not not being able to find the TV remote. It's not in like in the movies. That's, that's not yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that's not serious. Mm -hmm. It's serious when people are shooting at you. You're taking off in an airplane mm -hmm. in a pitch and see, and uh, knowing you're not have a bit of fuel, right. and it's hard times are fixing to hit well, you. Well, yeah, you these guys, know. these guys, but mission before self was so important that they all still went, and uh, much to everybody's surprise, most of them survived the mission. And it's been one of the greatest traditions in the American military is the, the reunion each year of the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders. Mm -hmm. And we are fast losing them. The youngest is 92. The oldest is 97. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why they've decided this will be their final reunion next week. And they have been tremendous supporters of the disabled American veterans. Mm -hmm. Last year at Oshkosh, out of just, we had two of the, of the Doolittle Raiders with us uh, up there. And we did a program on the Warbirds in Review. Mm -hmm. And out of the wild blue, before they left, they presented us a, a large check. I forget the exact amount, $1,500 donation out of their funds mm -hmm. to the DAV because they feel you know, what the DAV does for veterans is so important. That's mm -hmm. uh, Speaking of the DAV and, and the setup and the, uh, the logistics, Lynn, tell us a little bit about what you do to help provide information of this, this very, very worthwhile organization. Well, like Larry said, we, we have a heart for veterans, and what we do is get out there and really try to spread the word, who we are and what we do and how we can help. Uh, everybody out there can stop by and see us and find a way to help a veteran. What would be the easiest way for us as uh, the, the general public to get information on you, other than, I guess, the, old, uh, the ultimate website? Uh, do you have a really active website? Well, you know, the best website uh, to find out information about the DAV, pretty much any information you want to know, is to go to DAV.org. That's DAV.org. And you can find all the information about chapters in all the states, cities across the nation. And uh, any question you have, and if you have a question that you can't find the answer to, there's a toll-free number you can call and get that no get the answer to your question. Well, in the background, you'll be seeing a, a very, very beautiful uh, shot from the uh, Panchito, and uh, this is actually uh, you shot this that yesterday, was yesterday, didn't you, yes, on the way over here. Give us uh, a little uh, 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 blow by blow picture. Oh, tell us what you're looking at there, Larry. Well, it looks like we're making a final approach into runway nine, right, right here at Lakeland. Uh, we you know, loaded a camera and uh, hard mounted it up in the nose of the airplane just before we left Kissimmee. We had left the airplane in Kissimmee for the last couple of weeks and hard mounted a camera. And uh, so what you're seeing there is short final on runway 9 right coming in and landing right here at Lakeland. Yesterday afternoon, about 7 o'clock, we were a little late getting out of, uh, out of Kissimmee. Uh, that's our, it is, it's Air just about landing. as close yeah. to the center line as you can get. As the nose there comes up. Almost as good a landing as you did in the airplane last time you <laughs> flew it. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Uh, but I tell you, the, the and I believe Sid Jones was flying uh, yesterday. Sid was with flying you. with me yesterday, yeah. Uh, Larry, I tell you, this, we're going we're gonna to kind of cut this interview short at this point. 
because we have a lot of other things that are fixed to happen. But would you be so kind as to come back? Uh, are you going to be here for the week? We'll be here all week long. We'd be happy to, to, Ben, at would your you, convenience. And you, or if you'd like to come out to the airplane, we can uh, talk about there. Well, it'll, it'll be almost be like you're there because we'll take you up in the airplane and, uh, and show you some mm-hmm. insides, uh, the, mm-hmm. the internal workings. But it's, it's such a worthwhile organization and a group. And, and your well, spirit and your, uh, your excitement is just contagious. The, the the contagion is 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 what we do here at Sun and Fun. And if you're not here, be here at least in your living room, and we'll see you next interview.